time, say it. Worship him for a few moments. Come on, just worship him for a few moments. Through a rough battle, how many have been going through a storm in your life? 
I've come to encourage you tonight that it may look like you're surrounded. Trouble on every side. It may, 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 it may. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I. This is how. Come on, would you give the Lord a praise offering? Hallelujah. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Yes, Lord. He's worthy of all the praise. He's worthy. Yes, Lord. That's why we came to praise Him. That's why we came to thank Him. That's why we came to love on Him. That's why we came. Tap your neighbor and say, that's why I came. That's why I came. I came to get back. I came to get back what the enemy took. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you remain standing for a moment? Let's just pray together. If you can. You know, a few days ago, it said that there was over 30 million that uh, watched the eclipse. And, and, and do you know that they prepared for weeks and some for, for years uh, for this day to come? And uh, some even made some high expenses of traveling and and uh, I know in front of our street there was cars backed up for miles and because uh, we live by the state line everybody's trying to get home and all for four minutes and <laughs> all for four minutes and as I stood there and watched with my grandson and I said you know the thing is is that over 30 million will watch this. Yeah. But the Bible says that Jesus will sound the trumpet. How many will be ready? How many will be ready? Have you prepared yourself? Have you prepared your table? Have you been running over with oil? Have you been good to your God? Have you said, yes, Lord? Or do you just go through the things and the motions and, and the commotions? And I told my grandson, what we need to do is focus on the eternal things. Because this is temporary. We're going to one day, the trumpet will sound and we'll go back. It says the dead will rise up. It says that we'll, he'll come back for his remnant. You are his remnant. But do you know that statistically it said, I was doing research because it just kind of Mess me up, you know, thinking about all the preparing that went into that. And yet, sometimes I was telling somebody on my way home, because they work for me, so they have no choice. <laughs> I said, do you know that if there's 168 hours in a week and you can't give up two hours for your God? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and what we have to do is focus on the eternal things. And I began to preach to him on the way home. It was a 30-minute drive. I thought, I'm going to practice my preaching. That's how I get skilled. <laughs> That's what I've been called. But do you know that only 30% of this world knows about Jesus Christ? I mean, to me, I took an insult for my King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I, I said, God, I'm going to start doing things a little bit different here. Because that means one out of every three is the only ones that know about Jesus Christ. It stop, we we got to stop playing this game, playing that we're playing church. We, we're going to have church. We, we need to be the church. We, we need to do what we do on Sunday and keep filling this place so that healing and transformation and so that we can see the real sun come from the sky. Hello, somebody. I told my son, grandson, I know I had you standing, but we're going to pray. I just got to get this. I just feel like I need to give you this I told my grandson that when when Jesus comes just like everybody's watching eclipse every knee shall bow every tongue will confess and will you he say I know you or will he leave you because there is 
God is a good God, but he's faithful to his word. And his word says you must know him. And so we must be careful and know that we know him intimately. Amen. Amen. We can't have just plain church. We're going to have church. Yes. Not just on Wednesday and not just on Sunday, every day. And we need to start infecting people and being contagious to people so we can change from 30% to 50% to 70%. We need to go preach the gospel everywhere. Amen. Come on and give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you today, God. We thank you for your promise, Lord. Because your word says in the New Testament 318 times, Lord, that the Son of Man is coming back. That the trumpet will sound. Lord, you mentioned it 318 times so that it would just reside inside a heart to be reminding that not to focus on the temporary things Lord to focus on the eternal things the treasures of this world will come and go but the son of the most high will come and bring us and take us back to the throne of the father now, Lord, use us tonight. Use the preacher tonight, Lord. Oh, God. Father, let her sound, Father, with a voice of authority to declare, Father, that, Father, to cause a shaking and an awaking in this house, Lord. Father, to cause not just anything, but to revive us, Lord, and revive, Lord. Let this world see what you really have for us, Lord. We are your remnant, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit would go in and out of every aisle, Lord. Touch every man, every woman, God, every child, Lord. We declare the blessing of the Most High, God, shall reign and over your people, God. And cause us, God, to be infectious to others, God. Cause us to preach your word, God. We don't need a microphone. We just need you, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you and give you glory and all the honor and all the praise is yours in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Come on and give the Lord, give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank you for obliging me just for five minutes. Oh, Lord, I just, I don't know. It's just been a good week. Uh, I seen that eclipse. It did. That didn't wake me up. It just shook me up and reminded me where my focus really needs to be. Amen. And so we need to just, just love on the Lord and love on people. People are hungry. I went in, uh, Bishop, you don't even know this. I went into Speedway and uh, over on Alexis, I, I, I left my daddy's house. This was uh, last week. And I, I just said, I'm going to go run and get me a coffee and then head over to the office. And I was about in the checkout. And I'm looking for my wallet. I said, I'll be right. She said, no, it's on me. It's on the house. I said, on the house, she says, you go to Compassion, don't you? I said, I do go to Compassion. She says, you come in and get some anytime. I'm like, what? I believe it. Yeah. And then I went somewhere else, same thing. They're like, you're from Compassion. And, and, but this is what God does. He blesses you with the little things. But he'll bless you with the great things if you're faithful with the little things. Amen? Amen. Amen. So aren't you glad to be here on a Wednesday night? Amen? Amen. Isn't it a good start? We had good praise and worship. I love hearing our pastor sing. I told Gina, yeah, I said, I feel like I'm a little overdressed with a white shirt. But I said, Sundays I dress down because I run around. Hey, that's a good rhyme. I said, so my Wednesday is my time to get my praise up and get my, my clothes up and, you know, just step it up a little bit. And, and uh, I'm not all that dressed, right? I'm just saying. <laughs> he looking good, don't he? He looking good. I like. I like. I seen that vest. I like. Man, he looking good. He like all covered. Ooh, he look. It looks good. Amen. And I'm so thankful for our pastor. I'm gonna tell you why. The little things that he does amount to big things. And if you've been around him, he'll bless you in little ways. That uh, just not any pastor does that. And that's why he's so unusual. And that's why this church is so unusual. And people run and go crazy and get saved. And 20 some, 25 people get baptized on. Who gets baptized? Yeah, you ought to give God a praise for that. I'm going to tell you that there's churches of 1,500 that don't have 25 on a Sunday being baptized. Now, we ain't being, we ain't talking about numbers. But let's just talk about numbers anyways. <laughs> 
I'm so thankful for uh, Pastor because uh, he went to my father's house. I didn't even know unexpected. And, uh, and Pastor Gene, thank you so much. Man, and he went over there and sang, and, and I went to stay the night last night with my dad. I haven't even been home, you know, at all. <laughs> I went straight from work to dad's and, and then went home and changed and took a shower and came to church. It's been like, I don't know. He looked and, good. Hey, I like that. That's what I mean. See what I mean? He knows right to what to say. And pastor, uh, the pastors were over, and my dad says, he said, yeah, they sang. He says, and, and uh, uh, our pastor, he calls him my pastor. He calls him my pastor, his pastor. He says, my pastor? He said, he could sing. Did you know he could sing? I said, nah, I didn't know that. <laughs> and then he said, yeah, and then he had another pastor. He could sing. He said, I like, well, I didn't know pastors could sing. But what a blessing for them to go and just roll. Amen. And then my daddy had the eclipse glasses. I don't even, I didn't even know you guys were going like, you know, that's the way we roll in this house. So it is a Wednesday, but it's an unusual day when you're around this house. So be careful because when you walk in, the enemy's being on notice. We're putting him on notice. Amen. Because you're going to leave here better than you came in. I promise you that. Amen. So I just want to put that plug. If you're here for the first time, we'd like to welcome you uh, to Compassion. Anybody here for the first time, would you just lift up your hand, kindly lift your hand. Maybe you're visiting for the first time, lift your hand. And if you're watching by way of streaming on live, um, you can uh, connect with us and, and um, we'll, someone will connect with you and we'd like to just uh, be able to pray for you. Uh, isn't God good? Amen. Si es tu primera vez, levante su mano para recibir algo para llenar. Gracias. Si estás levante visitando por la primera vez, alguien. Dele, Amen. Levante, Amen. Levanta sus manos. Alza. Yeah. One, two, three. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Levanta las manos. Levanten las manos todos. <laughs> Estamos bendecidos y agradecidos que están visitando sí. y, y esperamos que no va a ser la primera vez ni la última vez. Ah, Amén. Sí. Yo sé que les va a gustar nuestro pastor. Es un poquito loquito. Ay, sí. Pero les va, les va a gustar la iglesia. Amén. Amén. I said your pastor is very... Like this, that's all. <laughs> Eccentric. <laughs> yeah, I like, see, translate. He's, tra he's my translator. <laughs> uh, hey, if you can't have fun in church, where are you going to have fun at? Come on. Amen, amen. God is so good. Yes, he is. All the time, and all the time, he is good. Amen. So... I don't want to delay the service, and I'm going to ask our ministry team to come forward. Uh, this is the time that we receive our tithes and our offering, and today I'm going to bring up my tithe. Well, I'm going to text my tithe. If you want to text your tithe, you want to catch up from Sunday, and you weren't in here, this is your chance. It says in Leviticus 27, it says that everything that falls from the apples, that they would give the tenth to God. And the reason why is not, it's not that it's a requirement to give God a tenth, but it's, it's a, an obedience of saying, God, how much you have blessed me, I can do just this little bit. And the Lord says that it, when you do that, you're honoring him. You're honoring him with your first. So when Hallelujah. think about the tree and it, and it falls and you pick up the bushels and, and God says, you can keep 10 of those. You have 10 apples and I'm going to let you just give me one and I'm going to let you keep nine. God is a fair God. And he doesn't change his rules. He doesn't change his ways. And he says that when you do that, that uh, the enemy has to be put on warning because now the Lord is all over you uh, with your finances in all things. It's not just in salvation, but it, it, it's in all things. And we honor the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. It, it should be a privilege to give into the house of God. People thought it was a privilege traveling all the way from uh, all over across the world to come and do a four-minute uh, psych, bloom, gone. And, uh, yeah, it was beautiful. I enjoyed it. But my investment is into the kingdom. 
Because I'm going to tell you something. That even though I don't know where my dollars go, I know that there's some souls being touched with my dollars. I know that when uh, Sister Faye's out there giving out food baskets and, and, and weekly, I know I'm part of that because I'm in this. I'm, I'm all in. You got to be all in in this team. It's a Jesus team. It's not just a compassion team. It's a Jesus team. And you got to take his whole word for his word. And when you take it for his word, he says, I'm going to beat you my word. And, and my word is I'm going to bless you. I'm going to open doors. I'm going to open windows. I'm going to open all the things that people can't even open up. And you'll see what God would do. Amen. And this is why you got to keep coming to the church. Keep coming because this is where you're eating. And eventually it's going to rain in your house. And people are going to say, how and why? And that will be your chance to get them saved and say, let me just tell you a story about where I came from, where God brought me through because of a pastor that believed and prayed and, and opened the doors. And, and that's what church is about. Amen. God wants your testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just pray over your tithes and your offerings and receive it. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the privilege of giving, God. The Father, you don't, you don't uh, require of it, but Father, it's out of obedience that we give it, Lord. Because when we know that we're obedient in all things, Lord, then everything that is written about us in your word, Father, is transparent into our lives, God. Yes, and it becomes part of us, Lord. And we're just so thankful for your word, Lord. And Lord, I just pray over every, every giver and every tither, every partner, those that are maybe thinking about it and, and not sure, Father, let them step into it. And Father, we ask that you would bless them, Lord, and cover their jobs. Uh, let the entrepreneuring, Father, I believe that there's entrepreneurs in here, Father, that are being birthed, Lord. And we just thank you for them, Lord. We thank you for our pastors, God. We thank you, Father. Protect them, Lord. Protect them, Father. Cover them in everything they do, everything they touch, God, in their coming and going, God. We will be a shield for them, Lord. But they don't need us, God. They have you. But we'll undergird them and lift them up, Lord. And we thank you and bless your name. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. Thank you for giving on a Wednesday night. Come on. <clears throat> Everything I touch is blessed. Everything I touch is blessed. Yeah. Everything I touch is blessed. Come on, Pastor. I help my friends and family. The work of my hands continually. In everything, prosperity. Everything I touch is blessed. Everything I touch is blessed. Everything I touch is blessed. I, touch is blessed. I help my friends and family. The work of my hands continually and everything prosperity, everything I touch is blessed. Yeah. When I walk in obedience to the voice of the Lord, every good and perfect here be promised as reward. Everywhere I go, anywhere I live, his blessings. Overtake me his very best he gives. Everything I touch is blessed. Yes, it is. Everything I touch is blessed. Yes, sir. I help my friends and family. The work of my hands continually. And everything prosperity. Everything I touch is blessed. So listen to the Spirit. Do what he tells you to do. All of these same blessings shall overtake you too. You see, every seed you sow will soon be multiplied. God is a God of blessing. He's the source of your supply. Everything I touch is blessed. Yes, sir. Ah, everything I touch is blessed. <laughs> Help God. my friends, family, yeah. the work of my hands continue. Yeah. And everything, prosperity, everything I touch is yes, blessed. Everything that touches bless. Everything that touches bless. I help my friends and family. The work of my hands continually. And everything prosperity. Everything that touches bless. 
Everything I touch, everything I touch, everything. everything. You see, when you touch someone, you bless them, and they bless you. When you give to someone, that's going to come back to you more than tenfold, even a hundredfold, God says. You see, you write a letter, you send an email, you send a text message, whatever you do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back a full harvest. Everything I touch is blessed. Woo! <laughs> May I say something? Everything. 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 <laughs> Sister Rosa, all I've heard the last few weeks is you're coming. And you're a powerful preacher. A little lady helped to mold and shape that man of God who's a pastor of this radical crowd tonight. And this is Wednesday night. I'm looking forward to hearing you. But listen, I didn't know our brother receiving the offering was going to be moved the way he was. But after we had had the eclipse and visited several that couldn't make it to church or didn't make it to church or needed our visit, I didn't know how it affected them. But I grabbed my phone and I sent a text to a friend that leads a prayer group in Erie, Pennsylvania at our church and told what we were doing. And immediately I got a text back and I realized the time of morning still and, 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 and a lot of people had to work through the eclipse, you know what I mean? And here's what she said. Pastor, more churches would be blessed and growing if pastors would visit like that. And I happen to know that this young man that you call Pastor Chaz, I've been walking with him this week. You have his heart. God has his mind and his heart. Oh, we got to go over here. I got to call this person. I never saw a pastor so involved in ministering and pastoring. My heart goes out to this ministry and this man of God. <laughs> yes. Thank you. If anybody knows what it's like to give and not begrudgingly and not because somebody gave to them, but just out of his heart, give. He ran this sister down at a cash register tonight before church. No, no, she had her money out getting ready to pay for her dinner. And he's saying, no, 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 don't take her money. I'm buying her dinner. He met, we made a trip across town to do that. I'm riding with him. I never saw a pastor do that before. When you sow a few kernels of seed of corn, how many ears come on the stalk, the blade? the ear, and how many kernels. We had some corn the other night, and different ones are eating that corn, and I thought, oh, how delicious that looks. <laughs> but I haven't been eating corn. Didn't want to eat potatoes for a while. But, you know, every time I eat corn, I think about it. A few kernels produces a great harvest. 
And that's, I sang that song. Mike Murdoch wrote that song. He, sing, he wrote the next song. But the next song is going to generate faith and cause miracles in this house tonight. Pour your healing oil through me. I said I was going to say a few words, and I said a whole lot of words. It's for you. It's for you. For your healing. I had him stop it because Sister Sylvia's grandson, Brother John's grandson, is in need of a healing, all right? So I want you to sing it. Everyone who needs a healing in this place, I want you to stand at this altar while he sings it. And I want Elder John and Sister Sylvia to come. I'm going to give you this brand new cloth. It's brand new, right? We're going to put oil on it. The elders of the church will come, and we're going to anoint this cloth, and you're going to take it and anoint his head with it. We're going to impart the gift of healing. That Hey, hey, hey. Oh, so if you need a healing, you might as well come to this altar. And if the elders of the church and those that have a healing anointing, you're going to come and help me pray for this cloth. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. My Lord, look at this. Look at this. Believe it now. For your healing oil through me, Lord, for your healing oil through me. Elders are going to lay hands on you. Go back to your seat. Take the wounds that I feel, Lord. Take the storms so real, Lord. Heal my heart. Believe. Oh, river. 
high A river, a river of love For your healing from above For your healing Hear it now, Lord, for your Lord, for your healing, Lord, through me. Hay un pueblo que vive muy feliz Ese pueblo es el pueblo de Dios Hay un pueblo que vive muy feliz Ese pueblo es el pueblo de Dios Ese pueblo vive así Porque un día conoció a Jesús el Salvador Ese pueblo vive así Thank you. 
Cristo y ayudará. Le vengan ríos y fuertes vientos, pero tu casa no se caerá. Le vengan ríos y fuertes vientos, pero tu casa no se caerá. Venceré porque Él está conmigo. Venceremos en el nombre de Jesús Voy a andar las calles de oro con Jesús Voy a andar las calles de oro con Jesús Voy a andar las calles de oro Voy a andar las calles de oro Voy a andar las calles de oro con Jesús Voy a andar las calles de oro con Jesús Voy a andar las calles de oro con Jesús. Voy a andar las calles de oro. Voy a andar las calles de oro. Voy a andar las calles de oro con Jesús. Why don't somebody say thank you, Jesus? And may be seated tonight. I like to give you guys taste of my childhood so you can know why I'm crazy, as I was told tonight. Well, you don't just get crazy, that stuff is rubbed off on you. Praise the Lord. So, the woman of God, my Lord, these strong men. Love to tighten those so bad until I can't open them. My, my, they choke them to death. Thank you. Don't do it too tight because she might have to move it. Amen. The young lady that's coming before us tonight is a mighty woman of God. She's going to have to preach in Spanish and English because we've got some people that are here tonight from our new uh, program that services the Spanish community. And uh, they're here tonight. And, so, and they were going to come, and they didn't even know who the preacher was. So really, she really saved me tonight. And I'm trying to convince her to come up once a month for a Spanish service, like on a Saturday. And we can, you know, do the music, and she can preach. I just can't do and preach a whole nother message right now because uh, my energy is not uh, where I need it. But when I get off these shots, I think it will spike back up. But I still got a few more months to go. So I asked her, I said, uh, what do you think about that? And she said, you know, I think we could swing it. Yeah. Amen. So I want you to know that growing up, we, we, my grandparents uh, had went through a tragic uh, and very difficult time in their life. And they ended up, they were Catholic all their life. And they ended up going to a small Pentecostal church in Defiance, Ohio, called Bethel. And um, the Lord not only saved them and restored their marriage, but then I was born, and I needed the Lord to touch my body and heal my body. And in that church, that's where the Lord did his miracle. Now, at that time, she was already pastoring, but her, the pastors that our church that, that my grandparents got saved under are her cousins. And um, there was two, my two favorite preachers as a kid that I looked up to the most uh, were Pastor Lisa and Pastor Rosa. And Pastor Tito, he was a great preacher, but he's, he was so much more into the people and into, you know, the organization. And he was, he's just all love and kindness. But these two ladies that are cousins, man, they just, they're T.D. Jakes in a skirt. <laughs> there was a time when before we left Defiance, I was 11, and we were, we were selling a lot of things that we had. And she heard that we were selling a wooden pulpit, my first big wooden pulpit. And I was so honored, she came to my garage, and we did a trade. I took the glass pulpit they had, 
and she took the uh, the wooden pulpit, and she still preaches behind it today. And uh, that's just the history. I'm going to tell you something. I pr- I tried to preach like her, Brother Jesse, but I failed miserably every time. So I just decided to do me, you know. But I I had a chance when she was pastoring in Lipsick to preach at her church. When I found out she became the pastor of Defiance Bethel Church where we got saved, I was a little jealous because I always thought I would be the pastor at Bethel one day. But fast forward 20 some years, I'm good. I don't want to go back to Defiance. I'm okay. You're going to hear a dynamic, uncompromising word. Pastor Rosa has been consistent and faithful. And I will tell you that because she's not surrounded by uh, managers and publicists and promoters, that's the only reason you've not heard her. Because I feel like her ministry should be all over the internet because she is really, I could, this, this is the type of preaching I was born and bred on. And I should say born again and bred on because she always came to our church. We always did fellowship and all of those things. And I'm just honored. It, I've been pastoring in Toledo since I was 17. This is the first time she let herself come preach here. She never would come. And now she's going to come every month. Look at God. <laughs> and I wore a suit on a Wednesday, and y'all keep talking about it. Because you don't, you don't bring royalty to your house. Now, I know, I know everybody don't have class because you, you can't buy class. But you have to learn when you have royalty come, you have to act like royalty is coming. Yeah. Honor, it's a culture of honor. So I, I went and put my tie on and my white shirt because I knew who was coming in the building. And I really honor and respect her immensely, even though we've never uh, been very close as far as a friendship because there's an age difference, but she has mentored me from afar, and I have watched her and been so blessed by from afar. So I'm sad that more of our people aren't here to hear her, but I'm sure they're watching. So all of you that didn't come but you're watching, I need you right now to send a love offering so we can send her back to defiance with more than some gas money because the breed of who she is is dying off the mo- and they're not being recreated. I, I maybe, and, and what you have to understand real quick, I'm, I'm, I'm stopping, but what you have to understand is she's a trailblazer. She started preaching and pastoring in a culture that doesn't believe in women preaching. She's had to fight grown men for her right in the pulpit. And so I told her, if you come to Toledo once a month, I'll fight for you. I will push you. And, and I, because I, I don't believe her ministry is close to being done. I think she's just begun. I said, I think she's just begun. I said, I think she's just begun. And so she is a pioneer and a trip. So when you hear her talk, take the, make draws of her anointing. Make so, make so many draws from her anointing tonight that when, you, when she leaves, she, she'll be staggering. We'll have to carry her out. Pull from what she has tonight. Can you do that? Yes. Let's stand to our feet, clap our hands, and give glory to God for the pastor Rosa Perez. Praise the Lord. God is good. (laughs) You may be seated for a few minutes. It's a joy to be here, Ted. You've had me crying inside all this time. When we walked in, he, uh, well, he greeted us since the restaurant. And... um, when we walked in this place, I said, this is too much red carpet for me. <laughs> and like he said, you know, I've been in small churches. I'm not a big church preacher. I'm just a preacher. 
I, I do what the Lord calls me to do. I want you to stand, Jazz. He's tall. As, how tall are you? Is that all? Okay, I want to I want to share this word with you. Uh, the title of my sermon tonight is One Word. That's the title, One Word. That's what God's going to give you right now. The reason I asked you how tall you were was because I kept seeing you grow in front of me. And I thought, I wonder how tall he is. And it seemed like, yeah, the more we talked and everything, just standing there, you look taller than what I saw in the restaurant. And I asked the Lord, what is that, Lord? That's where he's going to take you in higher heights. It's going to be greater than great. And there's a reason for that. He's saying everything you touch is blessed. And you haven't seen anything yet. And the reason is, a long time ago, a preacher said, I see a vision. He said, I see this big jug, but it's a really, really old antique jug. Jug. He said, I see somebody pouring that kind of oil over you. If you keep him in it, like the things you shared with me, that oil is there. The oil is there. That's why you have such zeal towards certain things that not all your fellow friend preachers are going to have. Keep it and don't ever lose it. Because he loves that in you. Oh, God. Give God praise. Give God praise. Oh, give him praise. I didn't say patty cake. I said praise. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. We praise his holy name. I'm a very uh, person that asks the Lord so many questions. Yo siempre le pregunto muchas preguntas a mi Señor. Usted puede hacer lo mismo. You can do the same thing. And I love to know and see how he speaks to me. But I need to know what he's really saying. Me gusta oír de parte de mi Dios, pero también saber qué es lo que está diciendo. Too many of us read the Bible like we're speeding down the highway. Leemos muchas veces la Biblia como que vamos en carrera. This lady told me one day, she said, I already read the whole Bible, Genesis to Revelation. And I said, oh, then you know how to get to heaven. Esta señora me dijo que había leído de Génesis a Revelación. Y yo le dije, ah, entonces tú sabes llegar al cielo. She said, huh? And I go, yeah, I know how you read the Bible. <laughs> Some of us still do that. I'm going to show you something. Open your Bibles to the book of Proverbs. Yes, Lord. Chapter 13. As I speak tonight, the Lord said, tell them I will be speaking to their hearts about certain things. I don't have to have you up here to give you a special word. He's going to do it right where you're sitting. Mientras yo hable, Dios le va a estar hablando a su corazón. He told me exactly like that. Porque yo en lo humano no sé 
ni conozco su vida. I do not know in my humanness know your life or anything about you. So whatever God speaks to you, write it down and wait for it. Write it down and wait for it. Expect it. Espéralo. Cuando Dios te hable algo, espéralo. I'm going to tell you a testimony first before we go into the word. About 15 years ago, my daughter could not have any children. And we didn't know, which we later learned. Mi hija no podía tener familia. We learned she had many cysts and a lot of uh, things that were obstructing. And she, the doctor told her, don't, don't try. You won't get pregnant. And every month, you know how it is, ladies, the, the test. And she would cry and cry and cry. It was negative. Siempre el examen y, y lloraba porque era negativo. And one day, for praying so much, she told me this. She got tired. Don't get tired of waiting. Wait for it. Don't ever get tired. And the day you see it, I don't know if I'll be with Jesus, but you will remember. Hallelujah. Yeah. Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. Hallelujah. And you know what she told me one day? She said, I'm not going to believe in your God anymore. Yo ya no voy a creer en tu Dios. And you know what? Don't tell me to have faith. I don't have any more faith. Yo ya no tengo fe. And I said, Lord, what do I tell her? What do I say? ¿Qué digo ahora? ¿Cómo le respondo? And the Lord says, tell her she don't need any. You got enough for both. El Señor me dijo que le dijera, no necesitas fe, yo tengo suficiente para las dos. And this, when I was reading this, let's go to it, chapter 13, Proverbs, capítulo 13, en Proverbios, el verso 12, verse 12, and you don't know how many obstructions the enemy has thrown at me to not get here. And the last one he did today was made me lose my Bible. Perdí mi Biblia. So I don't have the Spanish version, okay? No tengo, no tengo la Biblia en español. But the verse says, uh, verse 12, you have it? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, as we begin. Whosoever, no, that's 13, I want 12, okay. Hope deferred maketh heart, the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Dice, cuando la esperanza está detenida, el corazón se enferma, pero cuando viene el deseo, es un árbol de vida. Now, the Lord said, read it again. That's what I'm talking about, reading too fast. A veces leemos demasiado de rápido. And I, and I read it again. Hope deferred maketh heart the heart's sick, but when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. Y lo vuelvo y lo leo. He says, read it again. And I go, oh, wait a minute. You're trying to show me something here. <laughs> so I looked up the word deferred. And I jumped all over. I saw it. It means delayed. And I thought, oh. It's not denied, it's just delayed. Oh, Gloria. No me había negado la petición, solo estaba dilatada un poco. Ha. And I think that's for a couple people here tonight. Somebody giving up on something, and the Lord says, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. It's been deferred. For a reason, it's been deferred. And a lot of us thought, women, a lot of us thought we were ready to have a baby at 15, at 16, 18. We were 20-some, almost 30, before I had my first child, having waited 10 years. And you know what? I still wasn't ready. Todavía no estaba lista. Some of us want, 
Brother Chaz's humongous ministry. Let me tell you something. If it hasn't come, you're not ready. You're not ready. Because for greatness to come, you've got to have a head that can handle it. Because some people, God has made them great. Alguna gente, Dios los ha hecho grandes. And what have they done? Stepped all over people. All the little ones. Just step on them. Smash them down. Hallelujah. But when you know he has honored me today already. Because I was listening to you talk. I kept thinking, I'd like to meet that lady. <laughs> Whoever got that, you got it. You didn't get it. <laughs> and I began, I said, just repeating it. He's telling me it's just delayed. Me está diciendo que está dilatado la promesa de Dios para conmigo. And every time I remember, I go, oh my gosh, it's only delayed, but it's going to come. And I began to wait for it. I bought a stroller. Brother Chaz, she threw it away. I bought a carrier, a baby carrier. She threw it away, so I started hiding stuff. Empecé a esconder las cosas que compraba para el bebé. Aleluya. And I began to buy it and hide it and buy it and hide it. And one day she come to me and she says, Mom, I know this is not what you want when she wasn't married. She said, but the doctors told me I was going to have a child. I laughed at her. Yo me reí. It's good to say, I told you so. <laughs> oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to... Uh, arrive at a place that your faith is immovable, Paul said. Make sure that nobody can move it, nobody can shake it, no circumstance, ninguna circunstancia que mueva tu fe, ninguna condición que mueva tu fe, aleluya. Que te pueden decir esto y lo otro. When she was going through her angry spell, cuando estaba pasando días de coraje ella, she said, she would tell me things, you know, and I'm over here trying to answer back, contestándole. Yeah, anybody here try to do that, you know, defend God? And so uh, one day I went to the Lord and I said, I don't know what else to say. Yo no sé qué más que decir. I don't know how to defend you, Lord. No sé cómo defenderte. And he said, who ever told you I need somebody to defend me? And again, my faith grew, hallelujah, and I praised him because he's greater, amen, than any obstacle in this life. Any, anything, 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 hallelujah. And that's why I entitled this sermon, One Word. And that's all you need. That's all I needed was to grab that word, amen. And, and understand it and know what he was telling me. Conocer y saber lo que él estaba hablando me. Ojalá que tú sepas lo que Dios está hablando en esta noche. I pray that you know what God is trying to tell you tonight. And that you don't need a lot of words. Some people say, well, God never speaks to me. Sixty-six chapters. Sesenta y seis capítulos. So much that every time you open the Bible, he's talking to you. Cada vez que abres la palabra, él te está hablando. Aleluya. Every time your pastor speaks, God is saying something. But you got to listen carefully. Listen to me, those that are aspiring to ministry. Los que aspiran a tener ministerio. When the Lord called me to pastor, I had two children. Amen. I was a single mother at that time. Eh, estaba criando dos niños. Eh, en ese tiempo, cuando Dios me llamó, I heard his voice right here. And I thought everybody had heard him. Yo oí su voz aquí. And he said, daughter. You will pastor. 
vas a pastorear. Now listen to what I'm going to tell you. Listen for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you ought to start a teaching for ministers or maybe you already got that. When God said, you will pastor, I, will, I have pastored going on 43 years. He pastoreado ya por 43 años. Aleluya, gloria a Dios. And I never once changed another ministry. There's people that are evangelists for a little while, then they're pastors, and then they go to the missionary field, and they actually don't know where they're going. So whenever God speaks to you and indicates to you what you are to do in, in the ministry that he gives you, whatever it is, cuando Dios te habla y te indica cuál es el ministerio, you do not change that agenda until he does. Tú no cambias esa agenda hasta que él te cambie la agenda. Aleluya, gloria a Dios. I've been feeling some things. Amen. And to me, it's not a total surprise that we will be starting this service once a month. Aleluya. But I haven't wanted to speak to them because I know what I'm surrounded with. Yeah. No, Pastor, we can't let you go. Yeah. One day somebody said, these people worship the, the ground you walk on. And I said, not so. Eso no es cierto. Ellos no adoran la tierra donde yo camino. And he said, how do you know? And I said, because if they worship the ground that I walk on, they'd be here every Sunday. Hallelujah. <laughs> All this, I love you, Pastor, love you, Pastor, love you, Pastor. Don't mean anything until you're here every day of service. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Until you can back it up with facts, with doing, instead of just saying then you don't even have to say it anymore. Cuando tú haces el amor, aleluya, con tu fidelidad, ya ni tienes que decirle a nadie que te ama. Aleluya, que, que, que te aman, aleluya, porque tú empiezas a ser fiel. You don't, when you worship the ground that your pastor walks on, I bet Pastor Chaz has been told, I love you umpteen times a day. But go back to some of those people and see if they tithe every Sunday. Where is your love? Hallelujah. Donde está el amor? You can see love, not hear love. El amor se ve, no se oye, aleluya. Oh, gloria sea. Somebody told me several times, I pastored three different churches. Amen, aleluya, for the honor and glory of God. And uh, just, just saying uh, that, that, that they love you, amen, and you look, you look for the love in what they do and how they do it. En cómo lo hacen y qué es lo que hacen. Your actions speak louder than your words. You've heard that forever. Las hechos hablan mejor que las palabras. The young man, you remember when he came to Jesus? And he said, Jesus told him, make it short. He said, uh, you got to follow the, the commandments. He said, I have followed, and I think he's a little proud. I have followed them since I was a child. <laughs> He seguido los mandamientos desde que yo era niña. But then Jesus put his finger on the guy's sore. And he said, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor. Ve y vende todo lo que tienes y dáselo a los pobres. Why do pastors have to pick up tight like they're pulling teeth? 
because God's people have not learned to give. God's people give when they want to. And I don't mean to talk about money. Excuse me. I'll go on. I don't know. I don't know why. Did. I don't like to talk about. I don't talk about money in my church. I don't. I say if they love God, they don't need to hear that every Sunday. They don't. They don't. Amen. So God will give you, if you can believe one word tonight. Si usted puede creer una palabra. I was in this service. At one time, this lady come up, and I said, I'm sorry, lady. God just gave me one word to give you. I mean, literally one word. Una palabra nomás para dar. And you know what she said? She said, that all, that's all I told the Lord. Give me just one word, just one Sounds like she's here tonight. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, yeah, the, words, the Lord said, the word is continue. Now, she must have been doing something really good for him to say continue. Isn't that something? Well, so God don't have to, and let, let me tell you something. He didn't create heaven and earth. Él no crió el cielo y la tierra tratando de decirle al sol que brillara, trying to get the sun to come out and shine. He didn't, he didn't take a lot of time. Amen? Do you remember what he said? That's it. And that sun popped out, has been shining ever since, and is more obedient than Christians that are 30 years in the Lord. <laughs> Dear Jesus, I didn't come to exhort, I didn't, Chaz. <laughs> but I will speak whatever the Lord has for me to say. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And with everything else that has to do with creation, was the same thing. Todo lo demás así lo mandó, con una palabra. And some of you are so terribly worried, amen, that... Uh, that you said, but how is God going to fix this? Nanya. Como lo irá componer Dios? You don't have to know every detail. Just know one thing. He will fix it. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. How's he going to pay all my bills? Haven't you heard lately? He's the owner of all the silver and all the gold. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I was in, in Lipsy, Brother Chaz, I had a stack of bills like this. That's not an exaggeration. And uh, I didn't know how else to pray. pray. No sabía cómo más orar. Tenía viles como así de altos, los viles. And so I sat back. I quit crying. I quit praying. And I said, Lord, those bills are not mine. You called me, those bills are yours. Esos biles no son míos. Tú me llamaste a mí a predicar, esos biles son tuyos. Aleluya. Phone rings. I was pastoring just a couple of years. I had never done my tax. We were lacking so many things. My babies were uh, four and five years old around there. My husband needed glasses. Oh, just a bunch of stuff. So the phone rings. Suena el teléfono. Aleluya. And I get the phone. I go, hello. And they said, Mrs. Perez. And I go, yes, this is she. Esta soy yo, la señora Perez. And they said, um, you can come pick up your check. I said, check? What check? I'm talking about a couple years back. And I said, well, how much is it? ¿Qué tanto es el cheque? I said, a little bit over 4000 I go, bye, be there. <laughs> can he do it or not? <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure he can do it today? He can do it tonight. He can do it before you get home. Oh, glory.
glory, glory, glory. I believe God's telling some, somebody something strong tonight. Aleluya. Yo creo que Dios te está hablando algo fuerte en esta noche. Aleluya. Gloria a Dios. We went, got glass. I can still see my baby jumping up and down because I was praising the Lord. Amen. And they said, now, what's the matter with you? Because I was shouting. <laughs> After they shouted with me, they wanted to know what's wrong. I said, babies, we're going to buy shoes. We're going to buy food. We're going to buy this. We're going to pay our bills. We're going to do all this. And then they shouted more. In one phone call, he had wiped that pile of bills. Oh, glory. And don't be sitting there thinking, I wish mean, he'd do that for me. Don't you know? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He changes not. I've seen him do miracle after miracle like that for me. I've lived on faith for all these years, and he has not failed once yet. So let me finish the story about my daughter. The, the old lady done forgot. A lo mejor pensó que la viejita se la había olvidado. I have two granddaughters. One is 13 and the other one is just turned seven. And she's a handful. Everybody falls in love with her. She's really, really awesome. Let's go. Uh, I asked Debbie to read them in Spanish, but she don't have her Spanish Bible either. Let's go to John, John, the Gospel of John, chapter 20 and verse 15. I think if we went home now, God already said something to somebody. Well, praise him. The book of John, chapter 20 and verse 15. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Tell you I didn't bring my Bible. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? Listen to this part. She's supposing him to be the gardener. When we go through trials, we hardly recognize them because we're living in our sorrow. Cuando hay prueba, cuando hay tribulación, no lo conocemos. This happens to us. She supposed that it was somebody else, a gardener, and she did not recognize him even when she saw him. Cuando lo vio, no lo reconocía. Hallelujah. And sometimes we go through depressions and, and what have you. Amen. And, and we can't see God. And I wrote a song a long, a long time ago, many, many years ago. And it's found in Job 23, where Job himself said, I don't see you. He said, I looked to the north and I looked to the south and I couldn't see. No te hallaba Dios. Busqué al norte y al sur y no podía encontrarte. And that happens. We can't see him because we're living in our sorrow and we're living in our emotions. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I want to tell you something, especially as women. Because we are weepers. But we're not weepers and warriors, which you have to be. Listen to me. One day the Lord told me, un día Dios me dijo a mí, you're either powerful or pitiful. Yeah. 
o vas a ser una mujer poderosa o vas a ser una mujer con autoconmiseración que siempre está, ay pobrecita de mí, por mí, there's, there's women that have a pity party every day. And the devil is the first one that goes to that party. El diablo es el primero que va a ir allí. And he'll add that, fire, that wood to the fire. Empieza a echarle leñita al fuego. See, you're all alone. See, nobody visited you. I want to tell you today, quit feeding your emotions. Oh, glory. Deja de darle de comer a tus emociones. How is it, pastor, that I feed my emotions? ¿Cómo es que le doy de comer a mis emociones? You're always crying. Todo el tiempo llorando, llorando, llorando. And one day I told the devil, I said, you will not make me cry again. No me vas a hacer llorar más. If the only thing I cry is to my Lord. A Cristo es que le lloro. Aleluya. There's women, they, they cry so much, I don't even want to hear them. Hay gente que lloran por todo, ni yo los quiero oír. And let me tell you something, boy, the devil has tried this month. Broke my good car, broke my bad car, my second car. He did this, he did that. He made me get a, a flu and just everything thrown at me. And I said, amen. Stand still and see the glory of God. Hallelujah. Paraos firmes y ver la gloria de Jehová. And I've seen his glory many times. Hallelujah. I bless his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. The devil could come and tell you, I'll take your son. And you got to tell him, you can't do that anymore. When he was a baby, I gave him to God. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. He already belongs to somebody. And that somebody knows how to keep him. Hallelujah. That somebody can bring him out of prison. That somebody can let him out of jail. That somebody can take a needle and turn it into a microphone and make him the preacher. Hallelujah. Glory. If that's a word for somebody, you better hug that word and keep it. You better hug that word and keep it. Amen. Hallelujah. She didn't even recognize his voice. She started talking to him like he was somebody else. Hallelujah. How else do I feed my emotions? You feed it with a lot of pity bread. Le das de comer con mucha auto con miseración. You want everybody to feel pity for you. Let me tell you something. I ain't got any for you. I threw all the mine away. No le tengo lástima a nadie. We confess we are the children of God. Of a king, no less. Confesamos que somos hijos e hijas de un rey. Aleluya. Un rey. Mighty God. A king that has control. Heaven and earth are his. Oh, dear God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we must trust that one word. Look at somebody, especially you women, especialmente la, las mujeres. Look at another woman and say, tonight was the last pity party for me. Oh, I didn't 
want to go there. <laughs> Look at Brother Chaz. Look at Brother Chaz. Want to help me preach? Now sit down. Make a little silence here. You know why I didn't talk to the man? <laughs> Pity is too ugly on a man. Just remember your pastor <laughs> invited me here. It's ugly on a man. It, I'm serious. La autoconmiseración es fea en un hombre. Un hombre llorando. That a woman, oh God, Jesus. A woman has to figure out all the problems at home. Shame on you. Oh Lord Jesus. I'm studying the life of an eagle. We'll bring it back sometime. The life of an eagle. You know, there's, they shed a lot of their deteriorating parts when they hit about 40 years. Cuando cumplen los 40 años, las águilas empiezan a botar todo lo, las uñas viejas, las plumas viejas. And as I was studying it, you know, I studied how they knock their beak off to get a brand new one. Se tumban el pico para... And, and, and I thought, oh, thank you, Jesus. He said, if a man is a man, he shouldn't talk like a baby or a child anymore. I'll leave the rest for when we get back with that. That's why he needs a new beak. Abba. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then some people, amen, can't get the romance they want, so they go to soap operas. Remember, I'm old school. And romance movies. Got to have some romance if I can't have it for real. Let me tell you something. The prodigal son ate with the pigs, too. And I call all that stuff pig food. You want to keep feeling, feeling, feeding your emotion with pig food, that, that pity is never going to go away. It will never go away. You're waiting for a, a holy Jesus to come down from heaven. Hallelujah. But you enjoy watching divorce, adultery. Hallelujah. Man with a couple of women. Women. I know men that watch soap operas. Why did you get me on that? Dear Jesus, hallelujah, we cannot let, amen, pity swallow us up. We cannot. Depression hit me in my first uh, uh, pastorate. Me pegó una depresión en el primer pastorado. Because I thought pastors were all powerful. They don't need no vacations. They don't need to rest the mind. No necesitan los pastores descansar. I still have a couple that say, no, my dad never took a vacation. Well, good for him. I need one. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you better give him a good one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And all the time of that depression, it hit me with a cold, chills, sweat, just uh, uh, anxiety, uh, heavy anxiety. And they say, well, if you're a Christian, you shouldn't get anxiety. Well, if you're a Christian, you didn't read the Bible. <laughs> because the Bible tells me that when Jesus was in Gethsemane, his sweat was like drops of blood. Cuando Cristo estuvo en el Getsemaní, Su sudor era como gotas de sangre. 
And the doctors have said that when there's great, great anguish inside, you begin to sweat blood. And I had anxiety that it was so crazy. And all the time, um, I kept saying, this is not mine. This is not mine. Esto no es mío. If you're sick tonight, I begin to say that. Si usted está enfermo, empiece a decir, esta enfermedad no es mía. Prove it, Pastor, with the Bible. He said he took all of our diseases. Oh, Hallelujah. Él llevó todas nuestras enfermedades. Reject all the sickness. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Every time because he took our sorrows. Hallelujah. She could not recognize him. You, sometimes God will speak to you and you can't see it like me. It took me three times to read the same verse for it just popped out at me and I got it and I took it and I ran with it. I was looking at my daughter while she was combing her hair one day. I said, will you turn around, please? She turns around, looks at me, she goes, what's wrong with me? And I said, I see that big old belly. I did, I saw it with my eyes open. I wasn't asleep. No estaba dormida. And that's why I told her, I said, turn around. Boy, that dress makes me real pregnant. And the truth is, she got, she got real heavy. Yeah. And you know, we women, we blame the baby. Hmm. But all it took, thank you, Jesus, was what did I tell you the title of this was? Say it again. All it took was one word. And when Jesus exclaimed and he said, Mary, her eyes were open. She turned around and she said, oh, Rabbi, hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Her sight, her spiritual sight was restored. Hallelujah. That's all it takes is one word. Hallelujah. If God had, let me see a minute here. God gave you one word already. Take your time. Raise your hand. Si Dios ya te dio una palabra. You're the first one. <laughs> Believe it. Expect it. Wait for it. And keep saying, I will wait until it comes. And when it does, you know what will happen? What the rest of the verse said, it will become like, whoa. I've seen that big tree in your life. It'll become like a tree of life. And many will come and feed, the Lord said. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Many, 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 many. Countless, you can't count them. Oh, hallelujah. If I were you, I'd stick to this ministry and never let go. Hallelujah. You got to be a part of it. Hallelujah. Hay que ser parte del ministerio que Dios está, va, va a levantar más todavía más. Hallelujah. God has great things in store. Hallelujah. And he will call you by your name. Somebody look for Isaiah 43, 1. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, and I have called thee by thy name. Your name. Look at somebody and say, my name is very important to God. You know, you still don't get it. You better believe it. 
gave him a new kidney. So now my brother-in-law's part Italian. It was an Italian kidney. He'll call you by your name. I was associating for just a, a, a little bit with a certain lady. She called herself a missionary. And I was associating with her. And she said, will you come with me to a certain city and uh, minister? And I said, yes, I will. Well, by, be, between that time and the time she came to pick me up, cuando vino esta misionera y me, me iba a levantar, God spoke to me. El Señor me habló. That is, this is the reason why a lot of people, God doesn't take time to speak to them. You don't listen. Por eso Dios no le habla a mucha gente porque no oyen. And I tell my church this. Why should God speak to you again if you haven't done the last thing he told you to do? ¿Por qué debe Dios hablarte si no? Some of y'all do what I did when I was a baby Christian. Back then, the Lord said, you're going to give this certain evangelist $100. I said, Lord, see that brother over there? He's got more money than I do. And he said, yes, but I want to bless you. Yo quiero bendecirte a ti. So again, you know what I did? Just what not, some of you do. I wrote a, a check for half of it. I wasn't trying to please God. I was trying to appease him. So <laughs> if your pastor can't believe you love him, You've been telling the Lord you love him and you ain't been showing it. Get back on that money problem. Well, let's go on. And I had associated with her without asking the Lord. Sin antes preguntarle a Dios. And a lot of you do that every morning. Shoot, get in your car and you take off. You don't tell the Lord, Lord, here I go again. Be with me, Lord. A lot of you come and tell the pastor, we're going on vacation such a, such a day, we're leaving. And I always tell my people, if, and they already know, if the Lord wills, pastor, if the Lord wills, Jesus, hallelujah. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, you're going to go one day with this lady and only one day because your word is valuable. Because he said something will happen in the future. And listen how much he loves your name. I do not want your name to be associated with what's going to happen. I cried and I thought, you love my name that much? Wow, I couldn't get over it for days. And sure enough, weeks later, the so-called missionary Takes off with a past, no, not the pastor, with a pastor's wife. And I thought, now I understand. Oh, how horrible. When God gives us instructions, there's a reason why. And we have to follow him even if it's like blindly because we don't understand the whole part of it yet. But when we do understand it, we, we answer him and we say, Lord, thank you because I was able to uh, obey you. You don't hang around with just everybody and anybody. Tú no puedes andar con todo el mundo. Tú tienes que andar con las buenas personas. The Bible says, dice la Biblia, aleluya, el que anda con malas uh, compañías pierde las buenas costumbres. When you walk with somebody that's, man, let's just put it like that, that's not nice, you lose your good. You lose it. Oh, 
because so-and-so can do that, so can I. <laughs> Those things God won't let Pastor Chaz do. Why? Because he has set you apart. He has literally set you apart. Oh, my gosh. Something set apart. Oh, I could preach on that all night. Something set apart is like when a wife is going to cook for her husband. She's going to have family over. Va a cocinar por su esposo, una señora. Va a tener familia. And you know what she does to make sure that husband gets those drumsticks. Va a asegurarse que las patitas de la gallina las guarda en un sitio para ese esposo. That means a special portion. Wow. I'm getting overwhelmed with this. Has been set apart. You know what you've been set apart for? Not the people. He set you apart for himself. Woo! What a word. Wow. From now on, your testimony will be, I'm there because God spoke to us one night and said he had set apart our pastor for himself. Hallelujah. That's why he's not out to please people all the time because he's got somebody to please first. And it's a special, you have a special portion here tonight. I didn't know God was going to give your pastor a word. And the Lord said, and I told the Lord, I said, quickly, Lord, tell me, tell me. And that's what he told me. That's why you saw him taller than what he is because he will grow. So next time they say, how's your pastor doing? Tell them. He's growing. <laughs> People catching it, this stuff in the air. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Another man God spoke to. Amen. And he called him. He called him three times. He called him three times. So if you don't want the ministry, move aside. He'll call somebody. If you don't want to support and back up, move aside. He'll find somebody. He said, Samuel. And Samuel got up. And he thought it was Eli. But he calls him again once he went back to sleep. And on the third call, Eli realized that God was trying to talk to the boy. That means... Eli, his perceivingness was out of order. That's a bad place to be in, a bad place to be in. Amen. So you need to know that if you are hearing the voice of God, you need to obey. And I feel like the Lord is telling some people here today a, a specific something. Maybe you've just been sitting back and not doing anything because of self-pity. No, because I've been hurt and I don't want to be hurt again. Pick up your cross and follow him. I heard something this uh, uh, time of resurrection. It was one pastor goes to another pastor and he says, I've been going through this and I've been going through that and, and, and just, you know, weeping and and the other pastor, which happened to be Oral Roberts, he said, show me your hands. And the pastor, he showed him his hands. He said, I don't see no nail prints. We think we've suffered so much. 
Every time I've, I've been done wrong, I said, my Jesus, suffer more. It's an honor. It's an honor. It's a pleasure. I don't know about you, but this church better run with the word God has given tonight. You need to run with the word. Amen. That God quit ignoring the call. Ooh, God is calling some people. And not just to come to the altar. You can come to the altar a hundred times and still not do what he's telling you to do. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Quit ignoring it. Quit rejecting the word. Some of you are afraid that if you launch out, you'll be stuck. You won't have the support that you need. The one that called you can support you. He will all the way. Él te va a soportar. God has been in this service since the beginning. I have felt, and I told my sister just before I got up here, and I said, I don't know if it's the heater, but I'm burning up. It's the precious anointing of God. Hallelujah. It's here. It's here in this place. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's here. He has spoken. Now you do. Now you work. If the Lord came and slew everybody to the floor, it would have been in vain if you got up and you still did not obey. God has... Listen to what I'm going to say. You have found the church you need to be in. And I'm not promoting Pastor Chaz. But I'm telling you this. It's time you quit grasshoppering around. Ya no es tiempo de andar brincando iglesias. It's time to be serious with the Lord. And quit saying... I don't like this and I don't like that and I don't like this about the church and God did not call you to be the judge of the church. You know what Revelation tells me? That he was moving amongst the golden candlesticks. The golden candlesticks being the churches. Hallelujah. He's here. Amen. He's here. Not to see your faults, but to look beyond our faults. Hallelujah. And work with our lives. Hallelujah. Some of you have been paralyzed to not work in the Lord. It's time. It's time. Hallelujah. Quit rejecting it. Quit resisting God. Don't resist him anymore. Let's get it done. Let's get the work done. Hallelujah. I will be coming back, but for tonight, I want just the people that raise their hands to come forward. Only those that raise their hands. God gave you a specific word as I was preaching. Si hay almas nuevas que quieren pasar, aceptar a este Cristo maravilloso. Véngase, no espere otra oportunidad. Cuando Él llama, Él te ayudará. Él te ayudará. Aleluya. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Don't look to me. I ain't going to give you nothing. It is He. It is he that has spoken to, to me. That's an awesome. You can be the word. Um, Debbie and Brother Jacob. Come with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's start over there. 
as we begin to pray for people, let us, uh, as you stand there, begin to tell the Lord, Lord, I believe. I receive the word that you have given me today. Hallelujah. I receive the word. Hallelujah. Place your hand on his chest. You must love the Lord above all things. Above all things. Above all things. And the reason why God ever repeats a word is because you must remember that. You cannot love anything more than God that could destroy you. My God. My Lord. I don't know what I'm talking about, but you do. You know what God is pointing to. Yes. Are you ready to obey the word? Beginning and not tomorrow. Beginning today. Whatever it was. If you need to consult your pastor, do so. Amen. Hallelujah. I think there's somebody back here. Hallelujah. Is she waiting for prayer? No? Okay, this one. Oh, they're helping me? Okay. Okay. Which ones are they? Oh, yes. That's it. That's it. Thank him because he has spoken to me. Ah! <laughs> Follow instructions. That's what he's saying. Follow instructions. Listen carefully. You should. And he'll give you an anointing to do it, whatever it is. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Receive it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 There'll be many things you have to listen carefully. Because when God gives an instruction, Pastor Chaz was even telling me, how the Lord would speak to him about certain things. And that's what God does. Amen. And we need to be obedient of all the little things and all the big things. Be careful that you do as he will speak to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
sus manos me sostendrá. See you. 